Okay, welcome to tutorial 8. Now, this is uh, about stereo isomerism. Let's start with question number 1. Now, um, 1 part A, part 1, name these molecules. Now, we can see from the structure given, the molecules has 4 carbon as the longest change. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and these two will be the branch. So, the name for this molecule will be, is a butane. And because you have two branch at carbon number two and carbon number number three. So therefore the name for this is two three dimethyl. Sorry. Butane. Okay, two three dimethyl butane. All right, so next one, part two, name the straight chain isomer. Now, isomer means they maintain the same molecular formula, but a different structural arrangement. So other than the one shown in the diagram, so we have to rearrange them uh, in a straight chain. So if you count the total number from the molecule, it's actually six carbon. So it's very simple. The number, the name for this straight chain isomers will be hexane. Because six carbon, no branch, straight chain. Okay, now let's look at B. Does the molecule shown have an optically active carbon? Explain your answer. Now, first, what is optically active carbon? Optically active carbon means a carbon atom, or we call it as a chiral center, that attached to four different group of atoms. Okay, four different groups of atoms. So in this case, we can see um, we have CH3, we have CH. So there's no chiral center, there's no carbon before different groups. So your answer for this is, is this molecule optically active or is this molecule having optically active carbon? Your answer is definitely a no. Okay, why? Because there is no chiral center. Okay, there's no chiral center. Okay, part C. Draw the structure formula of a molecule that has one more carbon atom and then the above molecules and has also a chiral carbon atom. So in this case, they want to have one more carbon. So initially we have six from the diagrams. We have total of six carbons. So additional one, we get seven. So you need to draw a molecule with seven carbons, including a chiral carbon atom. So again, chiral carbon atom means I have a... Um, carbon attached to four different groups. So which means I'm going to draw the chiral center first, easier. So it should attach to four different groups. So I start out with H. I try to make it more variety, more different groups. Next one, I can start out with a CH3. And then I can start with C2H5. And then you have C3H7. Now all different groups, and let's count how many carbons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So total of seven carbon and the carbon in between here, we put an asterisk here because this is a chiral center, okay, or chiral carbon atoms. All right, so that's the answer for part C. Now question two, stereoisomers include both geometrical isomers and optical isomers. Now which of the above type of isomers can be studied in a polarimeter? Now if you still remember, optical isomers is the one that can deflect or can change the directions of a plane polarized light. So that's the reason the answer for this is optical isomers. So for question two, part A is optical. Okay, so give essential structural requirements for a substance of the exhibit geometrical. For this, um, B part one, it must have a C double bond C, or you may just say it, it must have an alkene, okay, to show geometrical isomers. And optical isomerism, you must have, yes, chiral center or chiral carbons, all right? So for part C, identify a suitable substance from those given on the next page to illustrate geometrical isomers and optical isomers. Now let's go to the next page. Let's identify geometrical isomers. As I mentioned just now, to show geometrical isomers, you must must we must first to have a double bond C. Okay, so we ignore the one that without double bond. So uh, A is out. Um, D is out. Uh, this is actually out. Out. 
this one has a double bond, so this is out. So we only consider B, C, and H. Let's look at B. Now still remember the conditions to form cis and trans. This is a C double bond C. Let me circle this. This is a carbon. These are the carbons with double bonds. And you must have two different groups attached to each carbon. So in this case, yes, I have two different groups. Here also I have two different groups. So which means this one able to form cis and trans or geometrical isomers. And by the way, this one, uh, between H and C, 3H7, this is a higher molar mass. Between H and C4H9, this is higher molar mass. And both higher molar mass groups are on the same side. So this is actually the cis isomers. Okay, so this is cis isomers. And next, we're going to look at C. Now again, C, because it has double bond, but the problem is, now, one carbon should have four bonds, so I assume that here you have a hidden hydrogen because it's in a skeletal form, hidden hydrogen. So these two carbons here, one and two. Now we can see I have two different groups, H, and this one is actually connected to another side. So which means these two groups, the two big group here on the, the other side, on the opposite of the hydrogen, are actually unable to flip to the other side, which means I can't flip this side with the H to form a trans, or I can't flip this side with the H to form a cis, okay? So when you can't flip the group between these two, you can't get cis and trans, so C is definitely out, all right? Let's look at H. Now, you may be wondering why uh, H is chosen as a um, potential molecule, because if you look at it carefully, I have a C here. I'm starting from the left. I have a C here with a H and a bracket of OH. And then connects to another C with OH, bracket OH, and a CH3. Now, each carbon here only has three bond, one, two, and three. Obviously, there is a double bond in between them. And we actually fulfill the conditions, two different groups, two different groups. If I want you to identify whether this is a trans, so this will be higher molar mass, and this is 15, this is 17, so this will be higher molar mass. Look at the two OH group, and they are on opposite side, which means this is a trans. Okay, now if I want you to draw the cis, so how would be the cis isomers for this molecule? So same thing, I draw a C double bond C, and I try to flip one of it. For example, I maintain H and OH on the left. I flip the one on the right. Okay, so I flip the CH3 up and the OH down, and that will give you the higher molar mass group on the same side, and that is actually a cis. Okay, so that's how you uh, identify cis and trans. So overall, the answer for this to, to, to show geometrical isomers is actually B and H. All right, let's go back here. So the answer for C1 is actually B and H. All right, now let's look at optical isomerism. Which one show optical isomerism? Let's erase whatever I've done here. Uh, let's erase all. Okay, do it again. Now we are looking at optical isomers. So where is the carbon with four different groups? This one is definitely out. This one, no, because it's double bond. Double bond is always out, no opticals. And this one, you have two similar H on the C. This one, you have double bond, so it's out. This one, you have a C here with H, OH, but you have two CH3 attached to the same carbon. So this one is also out. And for this, you have one group, two group, three group, and four group attached to this chiral carbon. All right, all attached to this carbon. Therefore, yes, F is the one. And what about this? I have a C here. Probably they have four different groups, one group, two group. Oops, no, these two are the same, all right? So G is out. And what about here? This one is the one with double one, so it's out. So the answer for this is just F, all right? So that's all for this question. Let's move on to question three. Now, there are seven structural isomers with the molecular formula C5H10O, and they are carbonyl compounds. Four of these are aldehydes. Now, first of all, what is carbonyl compound? Carbonyl compound is, is either aldehyde or ketones because it has a C double bond O, that's carbonyl. So out of the seven, four of it are actually aldehydes. And the four aldehydes, A, B, C, D, have the following properties. Now we have to go through the properties one by one. 
first we look at a so a has a um, aldehyde a aldehyde a has a straight chain uh sorry for that i don't know why just erase that okay let's look at a aldehyde a has a straight chain while b c d are branch so let's do it here for a it's actually in aldehydes all right so i must have a c double bond o h this is an aldehyde group and then how many carbons just now we have five carbons 10 hydrogen and an o so i need another four carbons so i just do it as straight chain because it's given as a straight chain all right so total of four carbons and the rest i just put in the h and let's count how many h here does it match with the molecular formula of the compound given one two three four five six seven eight all right so you have four carbons so sorry you actually need another carbon because it's given as five my bad all right let's go for another carbon for this so i should have another carbon so total five carbons and then i add on to another three hydrogen here let's count again one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten yes that's your aldehyde a all right that's your aldehyde a now let's look for b aldehyde b is the only one of the four isomers with a chiral center and it exists as a pair of optical isomers okay whenever they say chiral center i will draw the carbon in between first okay the chiral center and then it is an aldehyde so i must attach to a c double bond o and a h all right and then you have another four different groups here so how many carbon left i should have c5 h10 o so which means i've used up two i still have c3 h i use up one i still have h9 o is done all right o is done so three more carbons let's just put in the carbon here three carbons because four different groups of course they are all different groups i have a ch3 i have a uh, c2 h5 I have a uh, C3H7. Let's check the total number of carbon. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. And what about hydrogens? Three plus five, eight, eight plus. Oh no, it can't work. So, so what to do? So let's check again. This one doesn't work. You must have a Cairo center. And five carbons so i use up three i need another i use up two i need another two carbons and it must be a chiral center let's do a h here okay to save that and then here let's put in a um uh, ch3 and here i put c2h5 i think that's work okay so h here and then you have two carbon three carbons so total three carbons gone and then you have three four 9, 10. Nice. Okay. So this is the structure for B according to the properties given. All right. So now let's look at C. Aldehyde C has two methyl group in its structure, but D has three. So let's put in the methyl group for aldehyde C. So I must have a uh, C double bond O with H because it's an aldehyde. And then I have put another carbon here and try to fit in two methyl group for um, C. Okay, so let's do this. I have a methyl group here, CH3, H, H, and then I put another methyl group here, H. All right, so because it's it, C has two methyl groups, so I have one and two. So let's check how many carbons you have one, two, three, four, five. I have five carbons done, and then three, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hydrogen done, and then one O. Yes, it match, done. So B and A, B, C done. Let's look at the last one, which is D. D has three methyl group. Let's try this. D has three methyl group. Let's go for D. So again, as usual, I will draw the aldehyde first. And then I should have three. So one, two, and three. Three methyl groups. So CH3, CH3, CH3. Three methyl group attached to a C with CHO. 
Now count the carbon numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, done, and then you have 9 plus 1, 10, 1, 0. Oh. Yes, that's your isomers of it. Okay, so you must fulfill all the properties given. Let's move on. Draw the three-dimensional structures of two optical isomers of B. Let's go back to B now. If you look at B, this is the chiral. Okay, so we're going to draw this um, chiral center first and then show four different groups attached to it. I have a CH3, I have a C2H5, I have a CHO and a H. Let's go to the next page. Let's draw it out. On this side, I have a C with a H. And then you may choose to put a C2H5 here. It's random, so you can put either way. So I have a triangle to show a three-dimensional structure. I have a CH3. And then I have a uh, we just line here, which is the um, aldehyde groups. All right. And then you draw the mirror image of this. C, H, as usual. On this line, you try to put C, 2, H, 5. All right. And then here is supposed to be Regis line, and then you have C H O. Try to get as close as the mirror image, and here you have a C H three. All right. So the Regis line and the triangle is to show that as a three dimensional, as I mentioned about three dimensional. So make sure you do that. So this is a mirror image, and so called the optical isomers or enantiomers. All right. This is your part two. Okay. Let's look at question number four. So there are two compounds, V, W, are isomers with the molecular formula C4H8O. So make sure we are following the formula C4H8O. And show the following properties one by one. Both compounds react with sodium metal. And both decolorize bromine water. So from here, I can presume that you must have an OH group. Otherwise, no reaction with sodium metal. Decolorize bromine. This one, everybody will know I have a C double bond C. Alkenes group. All right. Compound V forms a yellow precipitate with alkaline aqueous iodine, whereas W does not. So, if it has an OH group and it reacts with alkaline aqueous iodine, so I will assume that a methyl group directly attached to a C with OH must present in the structure. These two can be anything. All right, this can be anything, but as long as you have a methyl group with a COH. So this is what they want for V, all right? This is for V. And when reacted with coal KMnO4, V and W produce same neutral compound. Now, um, coal KMnO4, we, we actually did not learn this. We actually learned only hot. So this one, for now, we can ignore this, all right? So both V, W exist as a pair of stereoisomers. Now, when they mention stereoisomer means it can be geometrical. It can be optical. Okay, let's check. VW. So, which means that V can be a geometrical, or VW both can be geometrical, or both opticals, or each of it, uh, one for a geometrical, one for optical. So, it can be either way. Now, let's check the, 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 the structure later. So, let's look at A. Suggest the functional groups that are responsible for the reaction of sodium. Like I mentioned, this must be an OH group. Bromine water, alkenes group, C double one C, or you put alkenes. It's fine. Okay. Alkaline aqueous iodine, this one, a methyl group attached to a carbon with OH. You may just show this fragments. Okay. This will do. Just draw it up because uh, there's no name for it because it depends on the structure. Okay. So it will be just a, a methyl group attached to the COH for this. All right. So we're done with A. Let's move on to B. So just the structure for V and W. Now, just to revise, V, W both have OH and C double one C. Only V has uh, a methyl group that gives a yellow precipitate with aqueous iodine, and VW both exist as stereoisomers. Okay, let's try uh, to draw V. Okay, so V must have C double bond C. This is a must. And then, um, like I said, uh, what is the molecular formula again? C4H8. Oh, no. Let's put it here. C4H8. O, and you must include an OH group, you must include a C double bond C, and for V, you must include a, a CH3 a methyl group with OH. Okay, this three must be for V. So I already have the double bonds, and I should have four carbons. So let's put in another two carbons. 
So I have a CH3 with a C and then OH. Okay, and here I just put H and then I have one, two, three, four, and this one, I put a H here, all right. And then I have a uh, double bond, and then this for remaining, I just put H. All right, so that's your V. Okay, why is it a V? Now, first, I have an OH group, react with sodium metal. Second, I have a CH3 with a C connects to an OH. This will give you a yellow precipitate with alkaline iodine. And I have a, a double bond here, all right. So make sure each carbon is having four group, one, two, three, four, uh, CH3, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, done. So basically, this is your V. And can you tell me now whether V is showing geometrical or optical isomers? Let's check the double bonds. I have a double bond here. Probably is a uh, geometrical, but B, I have two H attached to the same carbon, so geometrical is out. But do I have a carbon center here? Yes. Can you see that? I have this. So I should have a uh, carbon here attached to an OH. And this carbon also at the same time attached to a CH3, two groups, and then attached to a H, and then attached to a C double bond C with H. Like that. So I have one group, two group, three, and four. So I have a carbon center here. So V can show optical isomers. Isomerism. All right, that's your V. All right, we're done with this. Let's go for W. W is much easier because uh, it did not have the uh, methyl group attached to it. So I just put four carbon, one, two, three, four. All right, because C4, H8, O. And um, this one need not to be there because it's for W now. So this is the only one. So I must have OH. So I can just randomly put OH. I can put OH here. Okay, so this will be CH3. And um, I can put the H here, and this will be the CH3. All right, let's check the total number of hydrogens. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight, and should have a double bond here. And then look at that. I have one group, two group attached to this carbon, one group, two group attached to this carbon. So this one will give you a system trans. So this is geometrical isomers. This can show a geometrical isomerism, which means it's in trans. I have a double bond with two different groups attached to the each carbon with the double bonds. Okay. Uh, did I check the hydrogen here just now? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it works. So this is V and W. Now, pay attention, guys. For VW, you can draw something different from what I've shown here. Okay. As long as it matches with all the properties and all the criteria given. Okay. It must have the, uh, uh, the same molecular formula. You must have the OH group, you must have the uh, C double bond C, and for V particularly, you must have a uh, methyl group directly attached to the carbon with OH, and that's the one that reacts with aqueous alkaline iodine. All right, so that's your V and W. Let's look at C. Now, state the type of isomerism shown by compound V and draw the structures of the isomers. Now, since we have identified as optical isomers with V, let's draw it again. Uh, let me check the compounds. I have a uh, OH, CH3, H, and C double, CH, CH2. Okay, let's do this. So I have a C, OH, um, three dimensional. So I have a CH3, I have a H, I have a CH double bond, CH2. So this is one of it. And of course, the isomer 2 is actually referring to its mirror, mirror image. So I just see here. Oh, sorry, this is supposed to be a Vegas line. All right, don't forget that. So here should be a Vegas line, and then I have a CH2. I have, sorry, my bad. I'm sorry again, it's a bit confusing here. So Vegas line, I should attach to the CH, double bond, CH2. Okay, that should be the way. And then I have a H here, and then I have a uh, OH here. Try to get as close as the mirror image, and then try to get this. This is a CH3 then. All right, a pair of optical isomers for V. Suggest a structure for a neutral compound X. And since the third one, I've canceled it, this is the X, 
And uh, we didn't learn this, the cold key amino 4. They wouldn't confuse you guys. So these questions uh, for D, we just ignore this. All right, so we move on to question five. Now this is the last one for tutorial eight. Although how um, now remembered for his music, blah, 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 this is the history thing, so, which is not important. So let's look at J. Now J shows following properties. Number one, let's identify one by one. Number one, it has a molecular formula CH, C4H8O2, neutral. Now what does it mean by neutral? Which means um, it is impossible to have a COOH, a carboxylic acid. So this is out, it's not an acid. It reacts with sodium metal. Again, uh, what do you think? Sodium metal means it must have OH, all right? It reacts with phthalene solution. It must be an aldehyde, CHO. This is the functional group. It does not react with aqueous bromine. Uh, I presume this is the double bond. So there is no double bond. Please remember this, there's no double bond. So this is structure, molecular formula with all these properties. In the boxes below, draw three possible straight chain. Now important guys, straight chain. So don't branch it. Okay, that fits the above result. So let's try K. Can you randomly draw it? It doesn't matter. So I have straight chain. That would be easier. Just draw the four carbon in a straight chain. Okay, four carbon. And I have an OH. So I just put an OH here. Anywhere you want, guys. And I put this as an aldehyde because I must have an aldehyde. And then the rest, I just fit in the H. So H, 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 H and H. That's your K. Okay, double check, C4, done. H8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, right. O2, I have two O, very good. So again, L would be 4 carbon. Um, aldehyde, you can't move elsewhere because it must be at the first or the last carbon. So it must be here. And the only thing I can move here is the OH. So let's do this. Just now the OH was here, second carbon to the aldehyde. So I move it to the... Next carbon. The rest are all H. All right. You just move it. And last one will be quite easy. You just move it to the last carbon, which is here. OH, guys. Anywhere you want. As long as it doesn't clash with the structure, the rest OH. All right. So KRM, I have a I have three straight chains isomer. We've uh, matching all the criteria given and all difference so they are all isomers so klm now compound j react with alkaline equals iodine to give you a pale yellow precipitate again guys they give pale yellow precipitate with alkaline iodine which means you must have a ch3 with c and oh that's one if it is an alcohol or you must have a ch3 attached to a c double bond o with h this is aldehyde which is impossible if that's the case uh, I have a CH3 attached to the aldehyde. The rest of the carbon I, can, I, I can't actually put inside because I should have four carbon. And in this case, if that's the case, this is the complete molecule. So this is not possible options. So we should look at alcohol. And we did have a uh, OH group. So compound J exists as stereoisomers and draw two structures of J to illustrate these stereoisomers. Now one by one, compound J should react with this, which means it must have the uh, methyl group. Let's check KLM. Which one here having a CH3 with the OH? Yes, this is the one. L. See that? CH3 attached to a C with OH. All right? So that's matched with that. And uh, can you see which type of stereoisomers they form? Do you see any type of one C? No alkene group, so geometrical isomers are out. And we have optical here, which is this carbon. C attached to an OH group, CH3 group, H group, and CH2, CHO. So four different groups to it. And I'm going to draw the stereoisomers here, a C with an OH and a CH3. All right. Again, guys, I should draw in... Uh, 3D form. See, I always make this mistake and same to you guys. Please don't repeat that. Uh, I should have a CH3 here. All right. And then I should have, if not mistaken, just now was, um, let me check back. CH2, CHO, the aldehyde. CH2, CHO, that's one group. And then I should have another group, which is just H. All right. So this is one of it. And you should draw a mirror in between it. And then the, the mirror image. 
mm, the wages and then you have ch2 cho right um the triangle here it should be a ch3 then and here remain the same oh uh, and you have h here all right so this is a mirror image for compound j i mean isomer l that matches with the criteria and that's it uh, for tutorial 8 okay thank you for watching this uh i will upload this to visions i mean by the time you have, you watch it means it's already on vision and um please remember to log into your tutorial session next week uh, if you have any questions then you can ask about the tutorial 8 so next video will be tutorial 9 all right uh, i'll inform you guys once i uploaded that thank you so much